morning, church. Good morning, church. Come on, somebody. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad that you are here today. Come on, it's good to smile at somebody, want to welcome somebody. A hey, couple things, two things I want to mention to you today. Everybody say today. today. At one o'clock, we have what's called meet the pastors, meet the team. And uh, whatever you got planned this afternoon, just go ahead and cancel it. Uh, because the best place to be is right here at one o'clock. But uh, it's a way for, for my, myself and some of our team to connect with you. Here's what we deeply believe here at Capitol. The church was never meant to be something we attend. Church is meant to be a family that we belong to. And everybody needs people in their life who become friends to their destiny. And we like to encourage that. We like to facilitate that. And, and we just love to connect and get to know people. And so we want you to build relationships. We want to get to know you. I often tell people, I don't read novels, but I love interviewing people. And I find people fascinating. So if whatever you got going, if you're new, maybe new to the area, maybe you're in the military, maybe new to church, maybe new to Christianity. We'd just love to connect with you. And it's what time today? Lunch is provided, child care is provided. So it's going to be very, very cool. The other thing I want to mention to you before we jump into our lesson, you saw it on the video. We just, I'm going to show you another video, but we have purchased a subscription for our whole church family called Right Now Media. And uh, you can download it through the GR or the QR code. Uh, I'm going to show you another little video, but it's over, it's probably 20 plus thousand videos from Bible studies to stuff that will support your marriage to parenting, stuff for your children. There's just a lot of great resources and it's a free for you. So check out this video and uh, we'll talk more about it in just a second. Child of God, your story is not done. If you are not dead, then God is not done. Faith in Jesus Christ is the key to having a well lit life, even in a dark world. Salvation is something that God owes to none of us. He offers it to all of us. And if we reject that, that's first and foremost on us, not Him. God became one of us. God is so gracious. There are times in which He will not only let you read the Bible, but He will let the Bible read you. The same power that brought Him out of the grave brought you out of the grave too. He's looking for those who actually believe Him. That's who He's going to use to change the world. What would it feel like to stand in front of your Creator. God, teach us how to marvel again. Teach us to be fascinated with the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. There you go. So, so we're just going to educate you. We're in a series called Life in the Word, and we're just trying to do some things to help you strengthen and enhance your relationship with God, enhance your personal studies. So the, the Right Now Media is one of those tools to help uh, just add to your library, add to your learning. Also, if you'll look at your outline, in your outline, at the very back of your outline, you got two QR codes. One of those QR codes is for Right Now Media, so you can uh, reach out to that. The other QR code on there is for a Bible reading plan that we're encouraging you to use for the rest of this year. And it's for the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we introduced this last week. So if you started last week, you should be up to about Matthew chapter 10. If you didn't start last week, you can just double up this week and get caught up. But think of this. How cool would it be if, if, if you don't have a Bible reading plan and maybe you, you, you know, just peruse scripture, but you've never really taken some time to say, I'm going to read and get familiar with the four gospels. What a goal to have before the end of this year. And, and it's about a couple chapters a day, one or two chapters a day. And if you did that by the end of the, by the end of this year, in a few more months, you have said, I've read the four gospels and uh, that would make me proud. And I'd be happy if you guys would do that. So that's a tool that you can use. And so you got those two R codes. So we're in a series, grab your outline. We're in a series called life in the word. And I want you to look at something that Jesus said in John chapter 10 and verse 10. He says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Jesus is saying you have these two 
forces, if you will, that are coming at you. One force that is coming at you is to steal, kill, and destroy. I'm coming towards you to give you life and to give it more abundantly. That word abundantly means superior in quality and super in quantity. Jesus says, I want to give you a life that is superior in quality and super in quantity. And as I read that this week and was meditating on, I got to thinking that's been really true in my own personal life. When I gave my life to Christ, he started improving the quality of my life and he started adding exponentially the blessings to my life. My life with Christ far exceeds what my life would ever have been without Christ. Can I get an amen from anybody here today? And so God is saying, I want you to have this abundant life. I want you to have this life that is superior in quality and and, and exponential or beyond in blessing. So the question is, how do I have that happen? Well, there's several ways. First and foremost is God gives us his son, Jesus. We have access to all that God has through Christ. He gives us his Holy Spirit to be a guide, to be a teacher, and to empower us. But the thing we're looking at in this series, the key is he gives us his word. He gives us scripture. And I want you to look at something that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7. We looked at this last week. In Matthew chapter 7, he says... Everyone then who hears these words of mine, the teachings of mine, and does them will be like a what? Wise Wise person, a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the rains fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall because it was built on something solid. It was built on the rock. But he who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man that when the rains fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, it did not, or it fell because it was built on the sand. And great was its fall. Jesus is saying that some people will hear my teaching and apply it. Some people will hear my teaching and ignore it. Everybody has an opinion about scripture. I don't care who you are. You have an opinion about it. That's right. And some people's opinions are favorable. Some people's opinions are, (laughs) I don't see how you could believe that. Regardless of my opinion, my opinion does not make something true or untrue. Something is true or untrue based on its own reality. You follow along? It's not what I think of it that makes it true. You're messing, I'm looking at you, they're all kind of funny. So just because I say something isn't true doesn't make it not true. And just because I say something is true doesn't make it true. I can say aliens are true and we don't know. (laughs) So he says, yes, I know. Okay, so there you go. There you go. There you just proved my point. But here's what I am trying to say to you. You all have a belief system. We all have a belief system. And a belief system leads you to behave. And here's what Jesus is saying. If you will let me, if you will let me, I will help you with your belief system. I will help you with a belief system that will help you have an abundant life that is superior in quality and increasing in blessing. If you will allow me, I will give you a belief system that will help you handle adversity and the storms of life that all of us are going to face. And if you will allow me, I will help you have a belief system that will cause you to still be standing when everything around you is falling apart and falling down. 
And most importantly, if you will allow me, I will help shape in you a belief system that will allow you to connect with your creator in a deeper, richer, more rewarding and more fulfilling way. I'm all in on that. So I, I know I'm preaching to the church choir here on Sunday morning, but my point I'm trying to make to you is when you leave this room, you're going to go into various places where others are not going to hold the word of God in high esteem. That's right. And all I'm saying is just watch and see how be people's belief systems serve them either well or not well. Find out whether life is coming to them with abundance or not abundance, with, with coming to fulfill what God wants for them to have or has been robbed of what God might want for them to have. So how, how do we build our life in the word? How do we build this relationship? So I introduced this thought to you last week, seven ways to build your life in the word of God. We said, number one, is to receive it with my ears. And you can go back and watch the YouTube channel and see last week's lessons. So I'm just going to mention these to you so you can get your outline. To read them with, read scripture with my eyes, to research it with my mind, and to remember it in my heart. Those first four are about gathering and growing and my awareness of what's actually in the book. Today, I want to look at the next three, and it comes, and they're going to come out of this, this week's memory verse. And remember last week, I gave you a memory verse. How many, how many remembered last week's memory verse? Got that. Come on. There's like five people. I'm so proud. <laughs> you know how encouraging that is to speak to hundreds and hundreds of people every week, and three or four people actually do what you say? No, that's awesome. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Now, this week's memory verse, it's a, you're going to have to write it down or hold on to that outline. Going to work on memorizing it. It's a little more lengthy, but I promise you, you want to hold this word, this scripture in your heart. And if you'll look at it every day, every day. And, and I'm actually trying to use a learning style here for you because we said this last week that we forget 95% of what we hear audibly within 72 hours. And by holding on to something like this, it helps you train yourself to recall. And here's what most, most of us recall offenses. Most of us recall hurtful words. Most of us recall things that hurt us and things that disappoint us. Most of us recall traumas and betrayals. You've got to train yourself to recall good things. And I'm training you to recall something good by learning and teaching you to memorize something like a scripture. And here it is. I'm, I'm going to read it to you, then we'll read it together. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Let me ask you this. Does anybody here want to prosper and succeed in life? <laughs> then you might want to memorize this verse. <laughs> On three, let's read it together. One, two, three. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then have good success. Look what it's saying. I've got to meditate on it to know what is in it. It's amazing how many people have opinions about God's word that don't know what's in it. <laughs> I have an opinion about sushi, but I've never eaten it. And if you were to talk to me about sushi, I could be very convincing why you should not eat it and why there's something wrong with people who actually eat sushi. You mentally can't be all together. <laughs> and I could get people to agree with me and shout amen really loud. C come on, somebody. Yeah. Here's my point. You can, you can have an opinion about something that you have no knowledge of. And many people have an opinion about God's word. They have no knowledge of God's word. And I've got to learn to meditate on it to know what is in it. And so here's number five. I build my life on the word of God when I meditate on it with my thoughts. Joshua said, you shall meditate on it how often? Day and night. 
When it comes to meditating on God's word, it takes time and effort. You don't meditate by a casual or perusing of scripture. You don't meditate by how many, it's not about how many verses you've read. It's about how deeply you thought about the verses that you read. How many, have you ever read something and you're like, I don't remember what I just read? Have you ever driven someplace and like, I don't know if I stopped at the stoplights or ran over somebody. Your mind, your mind has the ability to vacate while you're doing something. And meditating is simply saying, I'm going to pause and stop. Listen carefully. The first five, that I, the first four that I mentioned to you about hearing the word, reading the word, studying the word, memorizing the word. If you stop right there, that'll only make you religious. That'll only make you have religious knowledge in your head. It'll only make you know the doctrines of faith or the doctrines of a church or biblical teachings. It, it will only make you religious. The transformation of really building my life on the word is when I begin to meditate on it and I begin to take it seriously and I begin to think about it. And, and here's why, and notice day and night, how many, would, how many know that's a lot? But here's the reality. You're meditating day and night already. That's right. We're constantly having mass media. We're constantly having social media. We're constantly having voices and voices and voices that are coming to us that are the voices that often come as the thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And let me just give you one voice, one lane, the news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know that in America, America, just America, there are over three thousand news rooms where there are journalists, editors, writers, investigators who are gathering the news. Now, when you listen to the news, do they ever have good news? No, they're just reporting what the thief is coming to kill, steal, and destroy. Here's the war and here's this injustice and here's this problem and here's this wrong. And, and, and the news, many of them are on a 24 hour cycle. <laughs> and people meditate on it day and night. And then, and then the news, it's usually never positive. It's constantly coming at you. And it's usually on a cycle of every hour or every 30 minutes. So in case you didn't get it, let's repeat it to you. So it's coming at you, coming at you, coming at you. Terror, fear, setbacks, evil, destruction, fear, and worry. And this stuff's coming at you. And, you're, and whether you realize it or not, you're meditating. You're meditating. So when the Bible tells us we should meditate on God's word day and night... <laughs> Uh, he's, trying to, he's trying to help me get into a different mindset. So meditation simply is to pause. I'm looking at it. I'm pausing and to think, to pause and ponder. In fact, Proverb, excuse me, Psalms 119 says it this way. I meditate on your precepts. I meditate on your thoughts. I meditate on your teaching and I consider your ways. Why is that important? Because God's ways are not my ways. And if I'm not careful, I'll speak to the book from my ways when the book's trying to speak to me from his ways. And I, to meditate means I've got to pause and say, God, what, what are you trying to say to me? What are you trying to teach me? And when you're meditating, and this is, why, this is why the transformation happens in step five here. The transformation truly begins to happen of building your life on the rock. Because now you're beginning to internalize the word of God. You're not just learning it in your head. You're starting to put it in your heart and you're learning to internalize it. And when you internalize something, it becomes your own. When you internalize something, it becomes your belief system. Your belief system doesn't come out of your opinion. Your belief system simply comes out of something that you've internalized and you deeply believe. And when you deeply believe, you will behave towards that belief system. And that belief system will either bring blessing or trouble into your life. There you go. 
And so when I meditate on the word, I'm considering your ways so I can learn to live and move in a new direction that might be foreign to me. I mean, I mean, know what I'm talking about. God has a whole approach to my enemies that are different than mine. God has a whole approach to money that is different than mine. God has a whole approach to life that is different than mine. And I got to sit down and say, huh? I got to think about this for a moment. And when you meditate on it, you're pondering it. And, and the word meditate is, is, the analogy would be like a dog with a bone. You just, you're just going over it and over it and over it. And you, when you're meditating on it, you're meditating on it until it comes alive to you and it speaks to you. When the word of God becomes alive to you and it begins to speak to you, it will change you. In Genesis, it's just a quick verse. I love this verse. And Abraham has just come out of a big battle, rescued his nephew Lod and had this encounter with the priest called Melchizedek for you that know your Bible a little bit. But after this encounter, here's what it says. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in what? It came alive mm. saying, the word came a vision and began to speak. Oh, there's something powerful when God's word comes alive to you and begins to speak to you. When it becomes alive to you and it begins to speak to you, that's when it becomes transformational. That's when it becomes, and, and so when you meditate on the word, it, it, there's some beautiful things that happen. Look what Psalms, in Psalms chapter one, look what it says there. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands, uh, nor stands in the path of a sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight, his delight is in the law of the Lord and his law he meditates when? In other words, I'm changing the channel from the ungodly, the scornful. I'm changing the channel and I'm meditating on something good. I'm meditating on his promises. I'm meditating on his wisdom. I'm meditating on his ways day and night. And I shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. This verse is so good. And so, and so it's so rich. And so there's several promises in this. It says he delights. When you, when, when you meditate, you begin to delight in God's word. And when you delight in God's word, it's a form of worship. When you, when you take the time and start reading this, you're like, you're going to like pause. It's like, God, you're, you, you're wonderful. You're, you're amazing. Okay. There's something that's going to attach you. When you start seeing how much he loves you, when you start seeing his whole plan of redemption, everything he's done, gone through to build a relationship with you. Some of you are trying to earn your way to God. You've not meditated on the book enough. You, don't earn, you will never earn your way to God. Amen. You will never earn the merits for God. God loved you so much that he died for you. Some of you, when, when that drops into your heart, when that drops into your heart, that it's not about how good I am, it's about how good he is, Amen. That, that, that becomes worship. You just, God, God you're amazing. Thank you for loving me so much. Now, how do I love you back? When, and it says, it says you'll, when you meditate, it says you'll be like a tree planted by waters whose, whose leaves shall not wither. There's something about being planted by... We, you don't appreciate water until you don't have it. That's right. yeah. You don't appreciate, but when you begin to meditate on God's word, it will produce in you a vitality spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and even physically. There's something that strengthens you on the inside so that while the storms are beating on the outside, you're drawing on a resource from the inside because what's in you is greater than what's going on around you. And it's causing you to have this vitality spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and even physically in your life. There, there's something that draws strength to that. There you go. Good. When I was, see, see, if you've never done this, you should try it sometime. Just do word studies. Study out certain scriptures. When I was young, and this is way back, I took and looked up all the scriptures. And this is before all the technology we have today, but I looked up all the scriptures on heal, healing, health, made whole, all of those kind of things, thousands of scriptures, and had them all printed out. If you remember this old dot matrix. Had to tie the, tear the paper off the side. Some of you guys remember that? And I, this is all digital, all this, or not digital, but all this printed out and just begin to spend hours organizing and meditating on all the scriptures in scripture that relate to healing 
And I will tell you that God wants to be your healer. If I was struggling in the area of my health, I would read every scripture on healing. I would begin to memorize scriptures on healing. I would begin to hide those scriptures in my heart. I did the same thing with every scripture that dealt with prosperity and wealth and riches and, and, and the blessing of God and gathered all of those scriptures and, and, and just organized them and begin to meditate on them. I did that with thoughts like hope, gathered all the scriptures about hope and encouragement and would read them and meditate on them. Why? Because it produces a vitality in you that causes you to have a strength that endures. There's something really powerful that happens. The, 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 the other thing that when you begin to meditate on scripture, it actually produces fruit and causes you to be blessed. In other words, it says when you meditate, not only do you delight in it, not only are you like a tree planted by water, it bears its fruit in its season. There, it's, not just, it's, not just, it's not just mental aspiration or positive psychology of meditating in the word. There's actually a spiritual component that when you connect to your creator, it actually begins to produce the blessing of God in your life. Now, when I say blessing of God, please understand the blessing of God is several things. Yes, it's experiential that when you feel blessed by God, it's experiential. And, and what I mean by that is when you experience certain things, they begin to shape you. Unfortunately, I've already said it. Most people are shaped by a painful emotional experiences and that becomes the narrative of their mind. But you can be shaped by positive emotional experiences that are experienced by God's presence. And also, and you begin to know that God loves me. That God is for me. And that shaping becomes the narrative of your mind. The blessing of God is also transformational. There's before I was blessed and there's after I'm blessed. You ever seen the testimonial videos? It's like before I bought the product and after I bought the product. Hey, there was a before I met Christ and there's an after I met Christ. And trust me, there is a before and after story there. The blessing of God is tangible. You can hold it. My wife is a blessing from God. My children are a blessing from God. You're a blessing from God. When you're blessed, it's tangible. You can hold it. The blessing of God is also transferable, that when you've been blessed by God, you can give it away. God gave me salvation, and, and you know what? I can give Christ away. God's given me his spirit. I can give his spirit away. God has blessed me with different things, and I can give those things away. And here's the funny thing, that when you give away what God has blessed you with, you don't have less. The more Christ I give away, I don't have less Christ. The more of the Holy Spirit I give away, I don't have less. The more wisdom I give away, I don't have less. The more of my resources I give away, I don't have less. I confound that the more the blessing of God is tangible. And so, so this is what this is saying, that when I meditate, when I meditate and I take the time and effort to meditate, it's going to bless. It's going to bless me. Now, here's, here's part of the reason we need to do it all. One more time. In Psalm 77, look at this. In Psalm 77, it says, I remembered the song in the night and my heart meditated and my spirit asked. Now, we meditate all the time. And unfortunately, many times we meditate on things that are unhealthy and unhelpful. And so the writer here has got something going on. And so he's meditating and then he goes through a series of questions. Here's what he's meditating on. Will the Lord reject me forever? Will he never show his favor again? You ever started praying like this? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has his anger withheld his compassion? The dude is sinking in a hole with his meditation. But then I thought, I grabbed a different thought. To this I will appeal. The years, the years, now I'm going to remember. The years the most high stressed out his right hand. And I will remember the deeds of the Lord. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. My life is falling apart right now. I'm going through hell. I'm asking all these crazy questions and I'm sinking, I'm sinking, I'm sinking. But wait, 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 wait. I'm going to flip my focus and I'm going to start meditating on something else. I'm going to start thinking on something else. Listen carefully, church. If God can change your thinking, he can change your life. If God can change your thinking, he can change your life. 
Philippians says it this way. In fact, God tells us what we should think on. Finally, brothers, whatever things are true, whatever true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate, think on these things. If you and I want to experience the abundant life that God is wanting us to have, and if you want to stand in the storms and you want to have the success and victory he's promising, I've got to learn to think differently. I've got to learn to use the thoughts of God to bring the blessing of God. And I do that by meditating and putting his word in my heart, which brings me to number six. I build my life on the word when I speak it with my mouth. Joshua said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Words, listen carefully, words are powerful. In fact, one of the most important habits that you can ever develop in your life is the habit of speaking God's word in faith. Look at this scripture out of Proverbs. In Proverbs chapter 18, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Say, well, I don't like death. No, let me ask you this way. Are there foods that you know that are not good for you, but you eat them anyway? Of course you don't want death, but you just like the way it tastes in your mouth. No, no, this is, do you believe this? See, I believe this verse and I want to encourage you to believe this verse because this verse is saying that my words are powerful. My words have the ability to be creative. My words have the ability to be destructive. My words have the ability to release blessing and my words have the ability to release curses. My words have the ability to release the grace of God. My words have the ability to relieve the offenses of the enemy. My words have the ability to open up the windows of heaven and my words have the ability to open up the gates of hell. My words have the ability to turn an angry situation into peace. My words have the ability to stir up a situation to anger and fights. Your words, my words have incredible power. I can inspire with them. I can discourage with them. Words are powerful. We just often don't think about it. In fact, but the Bible tells us because our words are so powerful, we're actually held accountable for our words. In Matthew chapter 12, listen what it says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. That's why we're at point six. That's why we did the other five. That's why we hear the word. We read the word. We study the word. We memorize the word. We hide it in our heart by meditating on it. So I have something good in my heart. But an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. It goes on to say this, but I say to you that for every idle word men may speak. I wish I had time to really teach this to you. Because I am a communicator, I spend a lot of time thinking about what I'm going to say. Most people are not communicators, therefore, most of the talk they have is casual talk, careless talk, thoughtless talk, idle talk. But the Bible says, for idle words, I will give account of the day of judgment. For by my words, I will be justified. And by my words, I will be condemned. My encouragement to you is to think more about what you say. My encouragement to you is to pray more about what you're going to say. My encouragement to you is to realize that if idle words I'm held accountable for, then I should become aware of my words. If my words have power, God is saying you need to be aware that your words have power because while you talk casually, you still release power. While you talk carelessly, you still release power. While you say careless words, you still release power. Well, then if those powers in those foolish words, how much more power could be released in positive words or helpful words or creative words or instructive words because your words have a power to them. And, and Corinthians says it this way. And since we have the same spirit of faith, there's, it's, there's a difference between 
saying, I believe. And a spirit of faith is when it becomes your belief system. I, since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore we speak. Here's my encouragement to you. Here's my encouragement to you. That as you begin to get God's word in your heart, and you begin to speak that word, you're releasing a very powerful and creative force that can help shape and influence your life. In fact, in fact, you can frame your world by using God's word. Hebrews says it this way. In Hebrews chapter 11, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which appear. Now, some of you are looking at me like, oh man, I'm so, I'm so terrible with my speech. You're missing the whole point of this message. The whole point of this message is that you have the power to change your world. And that power is often in your mouth. In James, it tells us that our, if, the Bible says if, 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 if you never offend with your mouth, you're perfect. James chapter three, it's like, if, if you never mess, I, I've messed up with my mouth more than once, but if you never mess up with your mouth, you're like perfect, perfect. But you also, at James, it says you'll receive a, you receive a stricter judgment for what you say. But it says your tongue, it's a little thing, it's a little thing, but it says it's like the bridle that you put in a horse's mouth, or it's like the rudder that can steer a ship. Right. It's a little thing that with a big difference, your mouth is a little thing that can make a big difference. I want you to think about this. If my words are powerful and I'm accountable for my words, then my word could be a little thing that could literally turn my life around. Good. You cannot complain your way into a better marriage. But you can sit there and say, I'm gonna pray and think, what could I say to my spouse this week? that would unlock her heart, unlock his passion, inspire him, build him. God, let me take to prayer. What creative words might I say? Because words are powerful, but we never often think about what we say. We just say them and we're releasing, releasing either blessing or cursing. Maybe you could turn your whole marriage around. Some of you could turn your whole career around. You go in there and you complain about your job, complain about your job, complain about your job, complain about your job every day. Why don't you go in there and prophesy and say what you're going to do? Speak creatively. Speak life. You can turn your world around. Most people don't realize this. Remember I talked earlier about daydreaming. You can drive and like, where was I at? You can read without. But when you speak, when you speak, your mind has to engage and focus. When you speak, your mind focuses. When I begin to speak God's word, it focuses my mind. When I was a young believer, I was very negative. I was very fearful. But I began to hide God's scripture in my heart. That I have the mind of Christ. The greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. I am a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have... And I, I, because I knew, I knew I had to change. I knew my default was always to go dark. My default was always to go to fear. My default was always to go to worry. And I knew I was never going to be the problem solver I needed to be with that mindset. And so I began to just confess God's word and confess God's word and begin to change it. Because here's, here's, here's what I'm saying. It, your, your tongue can turn things for you. And when you speak it, it mind focuses. And now you're focusing on who God says you are. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, I don't mean I can do everything, but Ben, that's such an important thing to say when everything's coming against me. There's something powerful. I was talking to somebody the other day and I pioneered Capital Christian Center 35 years ago, January this year. We literally started with nothing. I mean, when I say nothing, nothing. And every, everything in my life, every good thing in my life, I can attach it to confessing it before I saw it. It's good. Speaking it before I saw it. I used to sit in this parking lot before we bought this building when it was a movie theater and just sit there and say, God, I'm asking you for this piece of property and I see it by faith. And 
begin to see it and begin to make drawings and begin to speak it. And, and then the reality is I actually saw the whole, all the other restaurants being ours too. So <laughs> I'm just getting started. <laughs> Come on, somebody. There's something powerful. And when you begin to confess, which leads me to number seven, when you begin to confess, when you begin to talk, it focuses your mind, but it causes you to lean. Have you ever noticed when you start talking pretty soon, you have to act? Number seven, I build my life on the word when I act with it, obedience, when I act with my obedience. The first six things we've been talking about is about gathering information, learning information. But number seven is actually stepping out. If all I do is the first six, it never becomes as transformational. At some point, I've got to actually step out in faith. Jesus said, you're not blessed by what you hear. You're blessed by being doers of the word. And so as our time comes to the end today, I just want to ask you this question. Where does God want you to start? What step of faith are you at right now today? In James, it says it this way. In James chapter one, it says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. Be doers of the word, not just hearers only. Be doers and not hearers only. Deceiving who? Yourselves. Listen carefully. You're not going to like this statement. I don't like this statement. You only believe the Bible that you actually do. You only believe the Bible that you actually obey. Yeah, I told you you wouldn't like that. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, goes away, and, once for, and at once forgets who he is, what he's like. But the one who looks into the perfect law of liberty and perseveres being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, not a for, hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Stand on your feet. I'm pray for you. Now, as you're standing, I want you to start thinking about your life. We're going to go back into worship, and I want you to actually put this seventh point that I'm teaching into practice right now. Where is God asking you to begin? Where is your next step, first step of obedience? I don't care who you are care how long you've been serving the Lord. I promise you he has a next step for you. Because we walk by faith. We don't sit by faith. We don't hang on by faith. The minute I stop walking by faith, I've just become a religious person. Faith was meant to be lived out in a daily lifestyle. So where is God asking? Maybe, maybe he's asking you to surrender your life. Maybe there's a part of your life that you're saying, God, I'm holding on to. And some of you, you sense that God has a call on you. You sense that you love God, you're serving God, but you know that you're holding back. You know that you're holding back. For me, that used to be staying home on Sundays and watching football games. I didn't know there was a pastor in me. I didn't know that there was a Capital Christian Center in me. And, and, and for the longest time, for, for, for a year and a half, I, I, I postponed fully surrendering my life to God because as long as there wasn't a good football game on, I mean, I love God. I'm reading my Bible. I'm praying. I'm asking for forgiveness when I say I'm going to watch a football game. But I didn't know. I didn't know that I needed to take a step of faith because there, there would, I would have never discovered a capital Christian center in me. And you've heard me say this. I am so glad that I've not spent the last 35 years of my life in front of a television set. Watching somebody else have a life when God was trying to call me to my life. But I had to surrender in obedience to get to the life more abundantly. What are you holding on to that he wants you to let go of? Some of you are here and there's somebody you need to forgive. Others of you, there's someone you need to talk to. There's somebody that God's been speaking to your heart. 
they're hurting. Maybe they're in your job. Maybe they're in your office. Maybe they're in your neighborhood. But you don't want to offend them. You don't want to embarrass them. You don't want to, you, you don't want to be overly religious. And your fear is keeping you back from taking the very answer of Christ to them. And you're not living on mission because of your own issues. Others of you, maybe it's time for you to get planted in God's house. Or maybe, maybe it's time to say, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that step and start trusting you with my finances and put you in my budget. Whatever it is that you're wrestling with, as we go back into worship, Make today a day of making the next step. So I'm gonna invite our prayer team to come. And there's gonna be men and women that are lined up here to pray for you and pray with you. And if you're here and you need prayer, because this is a house of prayer, we wanna stand with you and pray. If you're making a decision to accept Christ in your life, let us pray with you. If you need a Bible, come up and we'll pray and give you a Bible. If, you, if you've got a decision you need to make, it doesn't matter. But as we take a moment to worship, Wrestle that decision down and say, God, I'm going to make the decision to act. And if you need prayer, I invite you to come.